Our two planet protectors in the forest family arrive in a Southeast Asian rainforest. Strangely, there are no giant trees or rainforest animals in sight, only rows of small trees that seem to go on for miles. So much uniformity? This was definitely not a normal rainforest. We've arrived at our destination, the Southeast Asian rainforest. Oh look, here's my friend and fellow planet protector, Mari, the tree kangaroo. She will give you a tour and explain why it was so urgent you came here. Mari, this is Indigo, Dakota, River, and Aspen. They are the forest family. This is goodbye for now, my friends. Mari will take you from here. Good luck. Hello, my friends. My name is Mari, and I'm a planet protector. And this is my little baby. His name is Joey. Today, I will be giving you all a tour of my beautiful home, or what was once my beautiful home. As you can see, this rainforest isn't much of a rainforest anymore. I'll explain what happened. Follow me. Mari starts to walk towards the rows of small trees, and the forest family follows. Then, she starts to talk about what the rainforest was like a few years ago. Three years ago, this rainforest was full of tall, tropical trees, hundreds, thousands of different plant species and animals. There was so much biodiversity. Biodiversity is when there are many species of plants and animals living in an ecosystem. The trees were very tall, and their leaves were very green. The trees provided so much shade. There are also many delicious fruits and beautiful flowers. And there were so many animals. They were all my friends, and I got to see them and talk to them every day. But one day, everything changed. Giant machines came into this section of the forest and chopped down our trees. Without the trees, we animals had no homes. Everyone split up and tried to find new places to live. Now I am one of the only tree kangaroos left in this rainforest. The forest family looks shocked with what Mari has told them. Why would people cut down the trees? Planet protector Mari points to the rows of small trees and continues to explain. Inside the colorful fruit that grows on these trees, there are seeds that people use to make chocolate. Our forest was cleared to make room for a full sun cocoa farm. It started off as a small farm, but the demand for cocoa beans started to increase. The higher the demand for cocoa, the more trees in our rainforest were cut down to make room for the farm. Each year, our habitat becomes smaller and smaller. The forest family remembers the chocolate commercial they saw earlier. Dakota, who learned about sustainability during the WCS Wildlife Camp Online, poses a question. Did that chocolate from the commercial come from a farm like this? As our planet protector Mari and the forest family continue walking through the farm, they come across another animal, a leopard. Oh look, it's my friend, Larry the leopard. Let's talk to them and see how the farm affected them. Planet Protector Mari approaches Larry the Leopard while the Forest Family follows closely behind. Hi Larry, this is the Forest Family. I'm walking them through the farm and telling them how it changed our lives. It sure did. Did you tell them about the way the cocoa plants are grown here? Lots of pesticides are used on this particular cocoa farm. Pesticides are harmful chemicals used to kill any insects or other organisms that try to eat or harm crops. One day, my friend Leo the leopard and I came across a tree shrew that was eating a part of the cocoa plant. Leo was really hungry and decided to go after the shrew. Turns out, the shrew had some residue pesticides in its system. Oh no! Did eating the shrew have any adverse effects? Yes. A few days later, my friend seemed to be acting strange. I think the pesticides from the shrew they ate made them sick. I heard about such reactions in camp too. It's called bioaccumulation. Bioaccumulation is the gradual accumulation of substances such as pesticides or other chemicals in an organism. That's right, Dakota. Larry, I hope your friend is okay. Thank you for taking some time to talk to us. Goodbye, Larry. Bye, Mari. Bye, everyone. It was nice to meet you. Our planet protector and the forest family walk away from Larry and continue their journey through the farm. On their way, they come across an old northern white-cheeked gibbon sitting by the edge of the farm. Over there is my old friend John, the northern white-cheeked gibbon. Let's go talk to him and see if he can share more about what happened to the rainforest. Mari and the forest family walk over to John. Hi John, how are you? I'm here with the forest family and I'm giving them a tour of this farm and giving them information about what happened. Can you give us an account on how you've been affected by the cocoa farms? 25 years ago, the rainforest in these parts were very different than it is today. 
There were tall, beautiful trees everywhere. There were so many animals, and they all lived in harmony. Every day, I would swing on the vines from the trees with all my friends. We used to have so much fun together back in those days, but when they started clearing the forest, everything changed. My family and I became separated, and it's too dangerous for me to cross the farm to go find them. Dakota, I think you told me about this. Isn't this called fragmentation? That's right. Isn't fragmentation when an animal's habitat or piece of land is divided into smaller and isolated pieces? Is this really what happened to you and your family, John? Do you think you'll ever find your family and friends again? I hope so. Sometimes people grow their cocoa farms right in the forest without cutting trees down or using chemicals. If that happens here, we animals who live in the trees will be able to reunite. We hope for that too. Thank you so much for telling us your story. Goodbye for now. Goodbye, everyone. Everything that John told the Forrest family has hit them hard. They had no idea that Coco could change the lives of animals so much. As Mari and the Forrest family walk away from John, Mari continues to tell her story. Farms like this one affect more than me and my friends. They affect the whole planet. When a whole forest is cut down, a large amount of carbon dioxide is released into the air. The increase in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere traps heat around our planet. Similar to how a blanket traps heat around your body to keep you warm. Over time, this leads to changes in our planet's climate, which puts both animals and humans at risk. The forest family seems shocked to hear this information. Not only does this affect the animals, but it could also affect them too. Does this mean we should stop eating chocolate so the farms will take over the forest? Absolutely not. This farm is an example of one that is unsustainable. But all cocoa farms aren't like this. In fact, there's another farm not too far from here that is a good example of how cocoa can be grown in harmony with the rainforest and the animals that live there. The forest family looks very inspired. They learned a lot from Mari and the other animals and want to help out. Well, this concludes our tour for today. I really enjoyed showing you around and teaching you about the history of our rainforest. I hope you learned a lot. Goodbye, Indigo. Goodbye, Dakota. Goodbye, River. Goodbye, Aspen. The Forrest family did learn a lot from Mari and the other animals, and they are inspired to help out. After their tour with Mari, the Forrest family decided to take a journey into the jungle to help out the animals in the rainforest. Will you help them too?